there's so many challenges you're gonna face on this life of climb. It's gonna be steeper sometimes than other times. And you might be able to traverse some things easier and climb some things a little bit more difficult, but you always have to believe that you can put one foot in front of the other again and again and again, no matter how hard it is. And I think for me, there's been so many challenges and so many roadblocks and so many things that are just like, what's next? But just <laughs> keep going because you'll get there. Welcome everyone to another episode of a Life of Climb podcast. I'm your host, Sam Reese. Joining me today is Mike Gesser, co-CEO and founder of Clean Logic. Mike, thanks so much for joining us today. Was really looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. So Clean Logic makes sustainable bath products, and you have a really compelling purpose to which is to inspire all to achieve independence and success. Tell me a little bit more about your company and what that statement means. So Clean Logic is a brand of bath and skincare tools. But our purpose, inspiring all to achieve independence and success, started for me with my daughter. I have three daughters and my oldest daughter, Rosemary, is 10. And she was born with a disability. From when she was an early age, I always wondered what her future was going to look like. And I started looking at schools for her and, and what does after school look like when she's an adult. There's a lot of organizations and things that do things with people with disabilities, but nothing that really I thought was the right fit for my daughter. And so for me, I wanted to create uh, essentially my company uh, as a place where I would want my daughter to work. And what I realized is there's so many other people with disabilities that don't get uh, the opportunity to have meaningful employment. Yeah, what a great, inspiring story. I can see how um, just I know how connected you are to the business and, and how it connects to your family. Yeah. But you're an entrepreneur yes. as well. And I, I think uh, one of my questions is, is it that you caught that entrepreneur bug pretty early in your career. As we were briefing for this, that included a stint as a concert promoter. Um, you had a few other early roles. It'd be interesting to hear a little more from you on how this path led you to where you are today. For me, it started actually as a very young age. Some of my earliest memories were of being in kindergarten, five years old. A lot of my friends' parents were business owners. And I remember going to their businesses and thinking it was it was the coolest thing ever. And I, <laughs> I knew this as like David's dad or Brandon's dad or Benji's dad. And so they were just normal people to me. And I but they were doing extraordinary things. And I thought, okay, well if, if my friends' dads can do this, so can I. And so I remember just throughout growing up knowing that this was the area in which I wanted to create my life. And all of my experiences, you know, when you set your mind to something or you it's there, somehow you just seem to follow that path. And I was just always attracted to things entrepreneurial. I wanted to do anything I could to learn business at a very young age and understand business and find for me what was going to be the business that I wanted to be in. And that's just ultimately what's happened. Are you familiar with the, you, you may be just listening to you familiar with that sort of that famous uh, quote from Earl Nightingale, you, you become what you think about. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You, you sound like that person. Now on your, where was it that you met your co-founder, Isaac? Because I know that was also in your, uh, during your entrepreneurial climb. Where was that? At what stage of, of your career did you guys connect? I remember very clearly the first day I ever met Isaac he had just come back from a semester abroad in Argentina, and his his plan was to create this business and import uh, Hispanic foods from South America to the Hispanic grocery stores in Los Angeles, uh, which had the biggest Hispanic population in the United States. I'm like, okay, that's an in that's interesting, and but the way that he was talking about this business was with more passion than I had ever heard anybody speak about a business in my life. And I'm like, this guy's interesting. And we just started talking more and I was asking him questions. And I, I knew instantly that like I wanted to work with this guy. Isaac was the first true visionary I had ever met. I knew he was a real, he was just a good, genuine guy, but fascinating at the same time. And very quickly, I, I realized that he and I had the same goals and aspirations. So we just started working together. How long ago is that? That was Mike? maybe we were maybe 23 years ago, 24 years wow. ago. Yeah. 
I always think you know, there's, there's a lot of stories and vistage. I, I, I know that you know where people try to manage this co-founder relationship. You guys have figured out how to do it, and I know it can be some often rocky terrain. How do you guys manage this co-founder, co-CEO, and uh, how do you divide up responsibilities? How does that all work? Because you certainly have been successful at it. It really is truly amazing when you think about it. And, and I'm extremely fortunate to have what I have with Isaac. And I think it's, I think what we have is very unique, but he and I went through so much. It's, it was kind of really the true story of entrepreneurship. You know, we worked, we, we lived together. We were roommates together. We worked out of our living room, you know, very early on, we lived off of, you know, a couple dollars a day. We went through so many struggles and through that we built such an amazing bond and, and I think we became brothers along the way. You know, the things that made us more and more strong over the years is the tr is trust, right? We, we just built it such a, a huge trust in one another and we, we did that, you know, by having the ability to talk about anything and everything, engaging in conflict and understanding that when there is conflict, we are going to resolve it and listening to each other and understanding each other's points of view, whether we agree or not, but, but support at the end of the day. Also very early on, we knew what our roles were going to be within the business. Isaac was in the sales and the marketing and I was in the operations and finance and neither one of us ever wanted to step on the other person's toes. It was all always about bringing each other up but knowing what our ultimate goal was. But I go back to just being devoted to our, our ultimate goal and, and trust. I think a lot of the experiences that we had, the struggles that we had made what we have stronger, but you, you gotta have the ability to trust and you gotta have the ability to communicate and engage in conflict and be willing to talk about anything. And I think that's, that's, that's the foundation that you need. I've heard you describe your leadership approach as guided by three principles. You said being accountable, learning and growing, and caring deeply about people. Yes. And I just love that. How did you land on those three principles, and why, why are they so important and still define how you, how you work your business today? So accountability, um, th this is how you move forward. It's how you get things done. Nobody needs to be perfect. It's okay to make mistakes. But ultimately, you, you need to do what you say you're going to do. And, and one of the things very early on, I credit this to Isaac, he, he said to me, your word is the most important thing you have. I agree. And it's one of the things that has allowed our business to, to get to where it needs to be. But I think it's also one of the things that makes people who they are and allows people to essentially learn and grow, which is the next thing that I have as one of my uh, leadership principles. And, and for me, learning and growing, it's it's so important. And very early on in my childhood, I have a memory. It's interesting. My my parents used to read Dr. Seuss books to me. And <laughs> there's a, a quote from a from one of the books, the more you know, the more places you'll go. It stuck with me, obviously, for now, it's 40 plus years, probably. I find so much personal satisfaction when I'm learning and growing, expanding my mind. My Visage Chair, Irina, Irina Baranov, she's like, your, your, your brain is your strongest muscle and the, you need to continue to flex that muscle and grow that muscle. And I loved being able to learn and grow and share things with my team. And the more we share, all, I learned so much from Vistage and, and so many different experiences. And I find not just me, but everybody in my team, when we share our experiences, there's so much team growth and so much overall improved team health that learning and growing, you can just never, never stop doing that. I agree with you. And what about, and the caring deeply about people, that is obviously just from the few minutes I've spent with you, that's a, a key part of your makeup. Yeah. Caring deeply about people. I've, I've always loved people from when I was a kid, always, I've, I've always been interested and fascinated with other people and, and talking to people. I'm, I'm very social, understanding their cultures and their experiences and, and things that make them who they are. And one of the things I realized about people, no matter who you are or where you come from, Everybody needs a tribe and a sense of community. You know, for me, when it comes to business, people spend more time at work than they do with their families. I appreciate that and I respect that. As a leader of a company, it's always been my, my goal to be able to show this to them. And, and one way I like to do that is to by creating the best company to work for. 
Clean Logic, I know, donates a portion of its revenues to uh, organizations that support individuals with disabilities. And this this mission was, you know, your personal experience as you talked about it um, with you and Isaac and your families. You've talked about your family. How how did Isaac get so connected to yeah. this same mission? We have, uh, it's called the Inspiration Foundation, and it's a, a 501c3 corp. Isaac's mother, um, B is blind. And B has been blind since she was seven. B throughout her career worked to teach other blind people how to use technology in the workplace. The way that Inspiration Foundation started was to continue on with what uh, B's mission was. And what we did with Inspiration Foundation and through Clean Logic was raise money to donate uh, adaptive technology awards to um, blind and, in, and visually impaired individuals. And we would buy them, you know, iPads or screen readers or things that would allow them to either uh, start their own company or work at other companies. And one of the things for me was, and, and this is ac actually before I had um, my daughter, Rosie, one of the things for me was I always wondered, why aren't we hiring people? Why are we only giving them uh, or giving out adaptive technology awards? And at the time, I'm not sure we were in a position to do that. But for me, when Rosie was born, that kind of was the adrenaline shot, if you will, that I wanted to be able to do this, which I also think is extremely unique. Both Isaac and I coming from the positions that we do, Isaac as a growing up as a child with a parent who's disabled and me being a, a parent of a child who's disabled, it's kind of remarkable. And it's also something that like he and I, you know, it's so powerful, you know, mm. the way that we do it. And that's kind of yeah, it's like where it's unstoppable from. force, unstoppable. When I think about the inspiration you two have, I, I just imagine you two charging into the office every day. So we got to we got to change the world here. Yeah. And, and, you know, the thing is, and that's exactly what it is, like changing the world. And as we built this company like this is is it's not just something we do. It's it's literally in the fabric of our culture. It's woven into the fabric of our culture. It's a beautiful thing. It's it really is. And you're right. We we march in here every day and doing it. There's you know I think every parent understands or knows like you do everything you can for your child. And for me, it's like I come here every single day, wanting to make sure that my daughter you know has something that she can go to, um, whether she works at my company or not. Uh, something that she can go to where she can be independent and successful. And I think ultimately what we're trying to do with Clean Logic is build a model that we can share with every other company in the world, if possible, of what accessibility looks like. And I think a lot of people, uh, business owners, might be scared off by what accessibility looks like. For me, it's normal. It's part of my normal every day. And I think that's one of the reasons why we've been able to just dive head first into making our company as uh, accessible um, as it is, but there's still so much more. But ultimately what we want to do is show business leaders and CEOs and, and companies that you can do to what we're doing. And it's not scary or, you know, it's, it's actually relatively easy. You just need to want to do it. Love that story, Mike. Thanks for sharing those insights. We'll be right back here after the break. This episode of A Life of Climb podcast is brought to you by Vistage, the world's largest executive coaching and peer advisory organization. As a CEO or owner of a small or mid-sized business, you've got the weight of the world on you. But what if you didn't have to go it alone? What if you could journey with an experienced guide and an elite team of peers who've got your back? With that kind of support, how high could you climb? Vistage has been helping leaders reach new heights for more than 60 years. It's a proven, time-honored approach that can help you too. Learn more about Vistage and discover more leadership resources at vistage.com. And now, back to our episode. We're back here with Mike Gesser, CEO of Clean Logic. Let's get back to your story, Mike. How would you, for, for those of us that that are listening and trying to learn here, how would you help us understand what accessibility really means when it's implemented? If we were to walk the floor of the facility of Clean Logic, what, what would we see? What would be different? Give us a, a feel for how you would define accessibility. Sure. Um, well, we have 
In our, in our office, in our company, we have people with all disabilities. So for example, for those of our team members that are blind or visually impaired, when you walk in, in the front door of our office, on the floor, we have high visibility tape that leads from the main entrance to our production floor, to our bathrooms, to our break rooms, to offices. So for somebody that is visually impaired, they can follow the high visibility on the floor on the mm. tape to see where they need to go. And for those team members that are totally blind, there is a wire under that tape and they can use their cane to get to wherever they, they need to go. We have um, people who are on the spectrum um, who are sensitive to noise and distractions. For those that are sensitive to noise, we provide them with earphones, ear, you know, things that will block out extra sound so that they can go to their, you know, maybe it's their workstation on the production floor and not be distracted by, let's say, a forklift or moving pallets around or things like that. And also we have in, in some of the offices or in, in certain places, barriers where in case somebody's walking by, um, they don't get distracted by certain things. It's things that you just have to ask, how can I make this a little bit easier for you to get your, your work done? What would make your space uh, more comfortable for you to work? We don't have the answers. There's really no playbook and mm -hmm. it doesn't cost much money to do that, but you just have to ask. And you know, also we have things like screen readers for those that are visually impaired, where you can put a piece of paper and it will magnify it onto a special computer monitor. The monitor that we use for them costs the same amount of money as a monitor that we give to any of our other people, any of our other team members. Wow. And, you know, the screen reader, a couple hundred dollars, maybe. So there's so many tools that you can use that don't cost anything. It's again, for me, it's about people having the desire and wanting to take the first step to try it. And, and, and once they do realize that it's not really that different. I think the thing that inspired me the most is just thinking about the dignity that it gives every one of your workers, knowing that they can take care of themselves and such a blast to see a business like that. What's amazing about what you've done is you figured out how to do these things with accessibility and still grown a great business. Like they go hand in hand where, you know, you would assume like that they don't necessarily go hand in hand. Help, tell us why that goes hand in hand with success because you've been very successful. The boost to my culture within my company by bringing people with disabilities has been enormous, right? There is no, you can't even measure it. And you're giving people that normally wouldn't have an opportunity, an opportunity to come in and be part of a company and work for something and have meaningful employment and be able to take care of themselves and, and, and earn a paycheck where they normally don't get that chance. It improves the entire culture. You know, people are seeing this who, you know, people without disabilities are seeing this. And within my organization, like everybody participates and everybody's talking and everybody comes in in a good mood and it just translates into like productivity and growth and movement and collaboration. And these are all key ingredients of success. There's a direct correlation. And retention too, right? I mean, it's and not, retention. I want to work here. It's a great, I mean, that just creates this great stable workforce. Absolutely. What a, what Loyalty a, and retention. As a leader and a business owner, what's better than that? What do you do to keep yourself inspired, sharp, and focused as a leader? What are some of the, the things you might share with our listeners that have helped you? The first thing is, you know, you, you said inspired, right? You have to do something you love. You have to do something that's meaningful. If you chase the money, at least for me, it's not going to be the driving factor. For me, it truly is about inspiring all to achieve independence and success. And I think, you know, for me, it's my daughter. For Isaac, it's his mom. It's our team members. And again, for me, it's also the people. I truly come here every single day wanting to build a better world for my daughter, wanting to, to create the best company for my team members to work at and delivering to our customers products that I know that they're going to love. It has to start with loving what you do and loving your the reason why you do it. For those, when you can start achieving that every single day, the success will come. Your team will join your mission. They have to have the same vision. And I think if it's something truly remarkable, that they can all relate to and get behind, 
that will motivate them. You have to truly find your passion. And for me, it just came naturally, uh, especially with, you know, with being a parent. It's a lot. It's very busy. I credit a lot to Vistage. Vistage has given me so many tools to help me recharge and to help me make the most of my time. And before, like very early on in, in my journey, I was not taking time uh, to clear my head. As a younger entrepreneur, you, you've got to put in everything that you need to. But for me, one of the things that helps me like recharge, reset and get some clarity is, is music. I love music. Any chance I have to listen to music, live music, I will take that because I come back totally fresh, new person ready to, to go headfirst into everything that I love going headfirst into. So that's for me the, the biggest thing. I, I want to ask you, end with a final piece of advice. What's one thing you've learned on your climb as a leader that you would like to share with other leaders out there that you think might be helpful? There's so, and there's so much. <laughs> Something that's helped me continue is to really believe in yourself. And I, it might sound cliche. There's so many challenges you're going to face on, on this life of climb, essentially. And there's going to be... It's going to be steeper sometimes than other times. And you might be able to traverse some things easier and climb some things a little bit more difficult, but you always have to believe that you can put one foot in front of the other again and again and again, no matter how hard it is. And I think for me, there's been so many challenges and so many roadblocks and so many things that are just like, what, ne you know, what's next, but just <laughs> keep going because you'll get there. I love it. What a uh, it's such a blast to listen to people that run small and mid-sized businesses. I mean, it really is, as you know, this is what makes our country and, Absolutely. and, and the countries around the world. This will go. I mean, listening to you, you're building a business, you're helping the community, you're um, connecting it to your family. I, I just have to tell you, just uh, an honor to spend some time with you here, Mike. Just Thank you. Uh, to hear your success. Thanks again for joining us on a Life of Climb podcast. It's just been a blast spending time with Mike Gesser, CEO and co-founder of Clean Logic. I think we all will leave a little bit more inspired by your message, Mike. Thanks so much for spending time with us. Thank you, Sam, very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us for this edition of a Life of Climb podcast. Friendly reminder to please subscribe or follow the podcast to get all the latest episodes. And please visit vistage.com slash podcast for more resources to support you on your leadership journey.